Joining us right now to give us more insight is Dr. John Frank, board certified head and neck surgeon and hair loss specialist. Doctor, thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome. So it's called trichotillomania or trick for short. And the latest evidence shows that it's not just a bad habit, right? Like biting your nails, it's something more serious. Well, obviously from what we just saw, it can really affect uh, somebody severely. Mm -hmm. so nail biting, it would be rare for somebody to be devastated and it would really affect their life, right. just as, it, as we saw. So mm -hmm. it can be really a problem, very, very de devastating. When does this start in a person's life? Does it start early in their life? Can it start at any time? And what triggers it? You may see some children with it, and that's not really a serious version of it. But then as you go through ad adulthood, it can occur at any, at any age to adults, uh, men more than women. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's along a spectrum of the obsessive compulsive disorders, and they, they think that there's some biological components to it. Right. How yeah. often do you see this condition in your office? I mean, I'm a hair loss specialist and a hair loss surgeon, and mm -hmm. I treat all different types of hair loss. And uh, when, we, when we do see somebody with trichotillomania, um, uh, we treat it, but it, it, it's the challenge is to, to, to learn who actually has it because it's either covered up or it's hidden. And even if somebody is coming to me with, with the problem, it may take a, a visit or two before they actually uncover and are, they have the courage to say what's happening. Right. So this is rare. People don't really talk about it that often. And that's why not a lot of people know about it, right? People don't like to talk about it. They're embarrassed. And look, there's the emotional component of having hair loss, mm -hmm. which is embarrassing. And then there's the, the other second part of the emotional component is you're doing it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a, it's something that you're, you're shy about and, uh, and uh, you're not really, you don't want anybody to know about it. Right. I'm sure you have to tread very lightly. I've seen people that will come in and I'm the first person that has taken a look at their scalp in 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, including family members, they're hiding it from everybody. And uh, it takes a special uh, sensitivity and, uh, and uh, good judgment and uh, knack for, for being very sensitive and understanding and, and, and being a, a good listener. Right. How do you treat the condition? There are a, a number of treatments for it. None of them are are, are are very effective. There are medications mm -hmm. like some of the obsessive compulsive disorders, the antidepressants and things like that. And, and some of them can be effective on a short term basis. There's a therapy which can be, uh, uh, people can undergo therapy and there's mm -hmm. some behavioral modification treatments which uh, the young lady was talking about. I, I wasn't that uh, uh, impressed by the way she was doing them. There are other behavioral modifications that she, she may have been doing mm -hmm. more effectively. Um, and then there's, you know, there's some uh, uh, topical treatments and wigs or even surgery for that. Right. Now, this is obviously a lifelong battle, and there are support groups, I understand. Unfortunately, there are. Mm -hmm. There are resources to go to, and, and that really, uh, the, uh, the effectiveness of the support group is going to be dependent upon the individual. Some people are great in support groups. Mm -hmm. Other people would just as soon uh, uh, not go to a support group. But they're available. They're online, and, uh, and uh, you can go and, and, and get some share with other people right. if you can you know go through it with somebody it may be helpful All right hair loss is devastating so for these people that are pulling their own hair out can you replace the hair it can be replaced but if it's replaced and they pull it out again it's uh, like pouring water into a bucket with a leak in it right. so uh, you know the main thing is to stop the cause of the hair loss and uh, and in front of that is to diagnose what's happening. Some people do it and they don't even know they're doing it. Maybe be doing it in their sleep or, or subconsciously uh, while they're daydreaming. And, uh, and it doesn't just occur on the scalp. They can be doing it on their, uh, on their eyelashes and things like that. Right, right. And you mentioned that there are some topical treatments for this medications? Well, there's some, co you know, some, some cover-ups, uh, right. some uh, aesthetic things that can be done mm -hmm. and, and wigs and extensions and things like that or ways to color or even tattoo. Right. But that's like putting a Band-Aid on, yeah. on an open wound. So mm -hmm. you really want to try and uncover the, the root of the problem. Right. It's a very sensitive issue, isn't it? And devastating at the same time. Uh, it is. I, you know, on one hand, hair loss uh, for young men, you can joke about it. And there's uh, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, monikers that uh, young guys have. Right. But uh, when you really start to understand hair loss, it can be extremely devastating. That's part of the problem because not everybody takes it so seriously. Right. Well, doctor, yeah. thanks so much for shedding more light on this problem. You're welcome. Thank you again. And for more information on your health questions, you can always visit the ABC News Health page and scroll down to the On Call Plus section. There you will find hundreds of leading medical experts answering your medical questions. From all of us at the Healthy Life production team, we wish you good health.